So, uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening, uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, thank you for attending it. Uh, we are going to deal to uh, surgical treatment of uh, male incontinence after prostatectomy and which should be the ideal technique for uh, treating the persistent incontinence, artificial urinary sphincter or male sling. I will moderate the session. Uh, my name is Francisco Cruz and I live in Porto. And uh, to help to uh, uh, explain to you uh, and to debate with you artificial nail sphincter and muscling techniques, we will have Carl Dietrich Sievert from Detmold in Germany and Salvador Arlandes from Valencia in Spain. Uh, this oral webinar is organized by European School of Urology online with collaboration with the European section of Function and Female Urology and also with collaboration of EU guidelines. These, this is the list of uh, our disclosures of the three of us, but none will influence the presentation that we are going to give today. And this is the flow. Uh, after this short introduction, I will give you the key messages of the master trial. The master trial is the first trial, uh, randomized trial, comparing artificial urinary sphincters and male slings. Then Professor Sievert is going to talk about artificial urinary sphincter, how to select patients, how to do the surgery, tips and tricks, and which complications might happen. And then for maze links, uh, uh, Professor Salvador Alendez will do exactly the same. And then we will have three cases to discuss and we hope to have questions and answers. Uh, and uh, we will try to answer uh, all your questions as much as possible during the time we have. The webinar is accredited, but you have to complete the questionnaire after attending this webinar. Do not forget uh, to uh, 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 complete the questionnaire. And so moving to the first part, which are the key messages of the master trial. And the master trial is a non-inferiority randomized controlled trial uh, that was carried out uh, by a group of UK uh, uh, surgeons uh, coordinated by Paul Abrams. The design uh, is uh, the typical design of non-inferiority randomized clinical trial, trying to demonstrate that slings, male slings, passive, non-adjustable male slings, were non-inferior to artificial urinary sphincters. 27 UK centers, patients could be included 12 months, 12 months after the uh, radical prostatectomy, and if during that time they had a conservative treatment received, and if they had failed that uh, conservative treatment, uh, stress incontinence was confirmed by urodynamics. Uh, uh, just to be sure that all the patients had uh, in fact incontinence. And uh, the primary clinical outcome, and this is a very important detail in the study, is a patient reported outcome. Any self reported urinary incontinence 12 months after the implantation of the device. Actually, it was so strict that the steering committee decided to uh, uh, add another definition of continence that uh, a less strict one uh, uh, that could be defined again by uh, a patient reported outcome, less leaking less than once a week or leaking a small amount of urine. And these are the uh, results of the primary outcome, which are actually surprising. Uh, first, because the uh, the high number of patients that were still reporting incontinence. 
said that they were leaking after mesling 84 after a visually nice sphincter without differences between the two arms, which demonstrates the non-inferiority of the mesling. But even with the less strict definition, two thirds of the patients would say or said that they were leaking which uh, is probably a number that might be surprising for many of us uh, looking to the literature or uh, looking to uh, uh, many of the, 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 the lectures we have about this, uh, this, this topic. Going into the details, uh, uh, how often do you leak? Actually, 50% or more than 50% of the patients reported that they leaked more than once a day, several times a day, or all the time, in both arms. And about the amount of uh, urine, uh, they usually leak uh, more than 20% in both arms uh, reported moderate or large amounts of uh, urine loss. The number of pads decrease in the same uh, uh, amount in the two arms, and uh, the pad weight was, of course, reduced from the uh, baseline levels. And uh, these are the numbers for male sling, 30 grams, for artificial nail sphincter, 73 grams, although this difference is not significant. And this is the variation of pads from baseline to one year after the surgery. About subjective uh, secondary endpoints that were also investigated, I think it is uh, uh, important to highlight this one. The satisfaction of the patients uh, 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 in, in terms of amount of urine loss at baseline uh, if the loss is inferior to 250 grams, apparently there is no difference between the two techniques, but if the loss is superior to 150 grams, more patients were satisfied with the artificial inner sphincter than with the male slings. About complications, serious adverse events, 13 cases in the almost 200 patients that were operated, and six serious complications with male slings. So uh, these are not very high numbers. And uh, uh, the number of complications that occurred in both arms in overall is identical for both techniques. So uh, uh, the key messages are incontinence rates remain very high after male sling or artificial urinary sphincters, probably higher than we could expect. Persistence of incontinence is very similar after the two techniques. Quality of life improvement was similar with both techniques, but uh, in terms of some secondary uh, uh, analysis or endpoints, eventually artificial urinary sphincter might be more efficient uh, for patients that have large uh, amounts of urine loss. Said that, uh, I think this is the summary of MASA trial. I uh, am going to stop screening my, my, my presentation and ask Professor Sievert to start his presentation. Thank you very much, Francesco. Um, I will switch over and share with you my presentation. Hope you are able to see that. What we have heard is really astonishing probably to most of us and gives us the question, can we still suggest an artificial sinker or later we will hear a sling to our patient? So, <clears throat> If we go to the consensus of the ICS, it should be considered to offer a patient after six months after radical prostatectomy and still be wet, the one or the other thing. But we have to inform our patients in addition that they will have quite an improvement on the one side, but they have to be aware that 
there is multiply treatments, especially with the artificial sphincter is needed. So when we look at that published from Chen, not too long ago, 2017, we see for both the sling and the AUS, a situation that demonstrates a similar improvement, just to take that with you. And if we look into the EAU guidelines, of course, in those patients with a stress incontinence, we have a week, but we have the suggestion for the artificial sphincter. This is quite an old slide, but even in 2004, the question was what to suggest the patient. And as we have just heard from the master trial, there was no indication by the loss of urine. But if we look at this, there is probably the one or the other, depending on the situation, how much a patient loses of urine because the one is probably more invasive than the other technique. Most of us are talking, when we are talking about the AUS, the AMS 800, which is part three parts with the cuff, the control pump, which goes in the scrotum, and the pressure regulating balloon, which goes into the abdomen, extra peritoneal or intraperitoneal. That's a discussion for other times. To do the right investigation of the patient and to come up with a good surgery and to face as little as possible complications, we have to look in those things. Of course, you have to confirm the stress urinary incontinence by history, probably with a three-day diary, a PET test is helping because the patient can do those at home already. And with a Euroflow and a post-avoid residual according to the ultrasound, but also with the upper urinary tract because I think it is important because the cystoscopy might show you strictures on the anastomosis stones. And we quite sometimes find a clip which has moved into the anastomosis or even a tumor in the bladder or a, a new occurring of the prostate cancer. So we have to address the question when to treat an anastomotic stricture during the surgery or prior to the planned AUS. Of course, we should look and investigate blood and urine Absolutely, the patient should have, if possible, a clean urine before you start that, the preoperative investigation, and you should know about anticoagulation medication. And we start already to go into the discussion, should those patients have an antiseptic antibiotic soap prior to their entrance into the hospital? Quite some clinics are suggesting that, but there is no official suggestion to that. The patient selection might help us also to see possible complications. So we have to identify poor candidates if they have diabetes, immune suppressions, if they are smokers regarding the wound healing or other perforations. But it is the importance of the examination, as mentioned, the cystoscopy prior to the surgery and to decide if you do the anastomotic structure prior and wait three months, which are suggested by ones or the others to do it while you implant the AUS. What to do to avoid infections? Probably to start with the antibiotics systematically, preoperative, some start the day before, but definitely like 60 minutes prior to the surgery, soaking with the, those and antibiotics, and to have a meticulous aseptic technique for the preparation for the surgery itself, but also before you place the implant. Don't take the implant out prior and early to have it prepped. And I will come later to those, the inhibit zone, as we might or you might know already. Watertight closure after cleaning all the surface and, of course, to continue with antibiotics. Coming back to the antibiotics, pre and interoptic systematic antibiotics are suggested because you are implanting a foreign body into this. And if you have infection, it is important. The discussion is sometimes wherever you are looking, which one you are using, which you are familiar in your own 
hospital and which is already established. If you start something totally new, it might be difficult and then you risk more than if you continue with what you are used to do. An aseptic technique is definitely a must. The irrigation of the pocket, I definitely do. I use a different antibiotic, but clindamycin in 30 ml sterile water is very helpful to wash off whatever could be there. And not to cause any bleedings or hemat hematoma afterwards, watertight muscle disclosure, level by level, and to decrease the chance of a pocket where you might have hem uh, hematomas afterwards. And to continue the post-operative antibiotics if the patients are going home the next day. If we are looking into the question, inhibizone, no inhibizone, if we are taking an AUS 800, there is no real difference. And this has been investigated either by the group to give suggestion for the implantation, but recently, 2017, by the German group, Domino Project found the same outcome that the inhibizone does not help you to avoid infection. From the Mayo Clinic, it is at least on the website, it makes it easy. And I do something very similar, vancomycin and gynecomycin, scrap preparation and drape and over those areas where you will not touch and keep the surgical field as small as possible and not to pick up any bacterial if not needed. Of course, drape it as good as possible. Also, the penis and the scrotum will be opened and a 12 French, some use a 14 French catheter should be placed to not have an overdilation of the urethra. And the wound irrigation, as mentioned before, with an antibiotic during the placement of the device. And please keep in mind to change more often your gloves than you think, because that is helping to decrease the chance of an infection as well. I think one of the major points to point out for the surgery is the preparation. Prep level by level in a midline decision. If you take, which I prefer, the mid um, uh, scrotal um, line, avoid bleedings, and even try to seal them with coagulation before it starts bleeding because the small vessels will retract in the tissue and you might not see them right afterwards. Free the musculus bulbocavernosum from the corpus spongiosum, which is the urethra, without really causing any bleedings. And the major and most difficult part probably for most of us is how to separate the corpus spongiosum dash urethra from the corpora cavernosa. If you have the catheter placed, push it to the side on the opposite where you want to, con to disconnect the tissue, either with a nice scissor or with a scalpel and do it gently on the corpora cavernosa. You will not cause their bleedings and you avoid any um, damage to the urethra because this is one reason to stop this surgery. And when you have freed the urethra from the corpora cavernosa, make it wide enough the area where you will place the cuff, usually the measurement where it is a little bit thicker, that this can move freely, there is no stress on the tissue, that there will not be stressed urethral tissue afterwards with the cuff. And for the preparation of the balloon, empty the bladder that you might not cause any damage, which has happened and reported while you go from the inguinal can canal into the external extraperitoneal area, depending what kind of surgery you have, keep in mind that some patients have even had a freeing of the bladder before. I have to mention that this is not only AMS, we, as I have shown you in the previous picture, there's also the Victor and Victor Plus, which are different because they, one has two balloons for a regulation, hopefully improving the outcome for those patients who are coughing. Um, and you fill, as you can see down here, the implant after it has been placed, like the six weeks through this scrotal titanium valve afterwards and fill it and adjust it. And hopefully the compression on the urethra will be less. The sapphire is already quite long and modified over the time on the market. And as you can see, there is no regulation balloon which goes intra-abdominal 
or exopertineal. It is filled on this valve nowadays. Silicon is a material which is quite nice, but it does have problems as you can see here. And we have to think about, especially of late onset infections, intrusion migration, seroma fibration, and chronic peri-implantations that we can see. Talking about complications, probably the top one during the surgery is the injury of the ure urethra. Then we have to stop the surgery to my suggestion, and I think we all go confirm on that. In the early postoperative, if you have inzibizone, you have to think about the allergic reaction, but that has not been often seen. Usually it is an infection. A small or single infection, you can continue with an antibiotic. If you have the swelling infection, so a wider implantation is explantation is needed. And if you face already in the early phase a leakage, wait for the time of activation. You have to inform your patient because you do not activate it. And for the other ones I have shown you, the Victor, Victor Plus dash, the um, other one, you can adjust afterwards. Suburethral atrophy usually doesn't occur in the early phase, but usually in the late one. So even there, we have to deal with the swelling, but what happens more often is erosion. As I have told you with tips and tricks, keep the window between the corpora cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum dash urethra wide enough that the implant, the cuff, does not cause stress on the urethra. Mechanical failures, you can't do anything about those. That might ask you to explain explant one part or even the whole. Usually it is the pump. Leaking problems, if you use the AMS at 100, you have to reduce the cuff circumferences or adjust with the other ones I have demonstrated to you. And if it is a suburethral cuff, either you can go transcorporal as one of the options, but probably for those who have more experience. Suggest your patients a close follow-up. Definitely in the early phase, limited physical activation that you don't cause a hematoma causing infection. And of course, periurethral pressure sit on a U-shaped um, pillow that this is avoided. And see your patients on a regular base. They might not know that they have an erosion and see them at least once a year afterwards and especially if they have received a transurethral catheter in the emergency room, might it be for the heart attack or other reasons? And you have to look for the situation that there might be a malfunction, tell them that you are available for them. Infection is usually causing erosion and area and redness on the skin, but the erosion in the urethra might not be detected by the patient themselves. And if we look into that, of course, the top one is the infection and then followed by mechan a, 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 a failure. But the urethral atrophy with the AMS 800, which has been dominated on the market for years and re-innovation for any reason is coming up. But I think it is important that we remember beside the master study, which we have seen now, there is the Saturn study from the EAU ongoing where the patients are just in a registry to see how they work. And I think even if our patients are not as dry as we hoped for, I think it is important that we offer these devices because we can improve their quality of life. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kidi. And now, Salvador, uh, can you share your screen? So, uh, Melis Links has become a real alternative to artificial urinary center in the last years, as everybody knows. And we have many options in the market, as you can see, and, and can be divided in fixed and adjustable ones. But uh, from my point, I think that a better classification would be based on the mechanism of action. Those fixed may be a repositioning slings, uh, like the advanced, and compression slings. Uh, how is the mechanism of action of the compression slings? 
Well, the mechanism of action is just to make a, a pressure over the bulbar urethra just to increase the urethral resistance and just uh, getting uh, continence in those patients with uh, urinary incontinence. This is the same mechanism of action like the adjustable ones, but with the, advent the theoretical advantage with the adjustable ones that you can adjust and increase the resistance, this pressure postoperatively. But the repositioning is linked, is different. Here, the mechanism of action, you need a residual sphincter uh, function, and uh, just cutting the central tendon, you can make uh, uh, just an indentation of the bulbar urethra and backwards uh, of, the, of this zone, and giving support to the external sphincter and recovering in this way the function of the external sphincter. So, probably it's very important just to identify the central uh, tendon and just to cut the central tendon uh, enough just to let the vulvar urethra just to move and make this indentation in this part. Of course, uh, if you pull the obturator arms, you can see this backward movement and this indentation that uh, may give support in some way to the external sphincter. But, as I have said, we need a good uh, residual sphincter function. So, we, need, we know that from the studies, uh, MRI studies, that a good sling position is crucial just to get continence in these patients. What we, uh, do we need uh, from the patient investigation before the surgery? Of course, from the clinical history, probably those data that suggest us that the patient uh, has a bad sphincter uh, function, uh, probably these patients are not good candidates for the advance, like having nocturnal urinary incontinence or the patient cannot uh, stop the flow. And uh, probably uh, knowing or measuring uh, symptoms and quality of life is interesting. But uh, I think that it's very important just yes, to measure the severity of the incontinence using the PAT test, not only the number, but the grams of uh, urine uh, lost during uh, 24 hours. We have recently validated the seven day PAT test uh, for urinary incontinence in males and uh, we think that probably it's important to have more days and not only one day because the physical activity changes and it may influence the decision tree. Of course we need more data as uh, Professor Carol Siebert has said before about the cystoscopy and in my opinion your dynamic study may add some information because those patients with low uh, maximum systematic capacity, low functional bladder capacity, low compliance or very severe detus over activity or with very low basalbalic point pressures or with bad contraction of the detusor of obstructed probably these patients performs worse than those who have a good profile in neurodynamic studies. Cystoscopy, well, uh, uh, Professor Carroll has described this but uh, for instance for the advance it's very important to rule out the presence of urethral stenosis or anastomosis because those patients need to be fixed this problem before and having an urethrotomy before is a, a bad pronostic factor. It is the same in case of identifying scars or defects in the external sphincter because probably has some correlation with a bad residual sphincter function. In this part, it's important yes, to make a repositioning test. I think this is crucial for uh, uh, choosing a candidate to an advanced XP because uh, if you push gently the central tendon region and you see in the endoscopy that it's a, a nice clo uh, concentrical closure of the external sphincter for more than one centimeter, many authors say that uh, there is a, a big difference in the results. Those with a positive test compared with those with a negative test. Otherwise, it uh, may be interesting just to make a bulbar compression test, uh, but here uh, would be uh, a pronostic factor for the success of those fixed slings, compressive slings, or just like the atoms that you, it's a, a adjustable compressive sling. But how many pressure, we really don't know enough just to stop the leakage but not too high because it's really difficult to get this high pressure even with an adjustable uh, device. From my point, the ideal, uh, ideal uh, patient for this link is those 
who had a mild moderate incontinence with bad hand dexterity or cognitive problems that are unsuitable for sphincter, artificial sphincter, those who have not received uh, radiotherapy or any endoscopic surgery for stenosis, those patients who want to avoid the complications associated with more complex devices like the external sphincter, on those who uh, will uh, or those who have to receive future endoscopic procedures. In any case, for the repositioning uh, link, like the advanced XP, the best candidate will be do that with good sphincteric residual function, with no anastomosis in the or, st or stenosis, and with no previous radiotherapy. The results in these cases are, are good. This is uh, the result of 33 years of with this multicenter study, and nearly a dry rate of over 60%. Of course, the, the figures, the numbers are very different if we compare with a master trial, but this is the point of view of the surgeon. And the safety is good. Probably the most frequent uh, adverse event in, uh, in all these links is the pain, but usually this pain is not longer than four weeks, and the complication in this area is not very high. Some is linked transaction for the noble urgency or elevated postvoid residual. In any case, we probably will obtain bad results in fixed links if the patient has severe urinary incontinence, has a history of radiotherapy or previous intervention for bladder neck stenosis and things like that. Just moving uh, to a uh, compressive but adjustable uh, device, uh, I have experience with this device with the atoms. It has, uh, as you know, uh, one central cushion that you can refill with uh, this silicon port uh, uh, located in the scrotum and uh, with mesh arms just to fix through the obturator foramina. As you can see, the more you feel, the more pressure you will give uh, to the uh, bulbar urethra, just increasing urethral resistance. And I just do, do want to show you some of the, of the parts of the surgery, just uh, accessing through a midline incision, just uh, uh, just dis uh, dissecting the lateral aspect of the bulbar urethra and just getting enough space to pass the, the, the needles and just to put the cushion just uh, in the middle and uh, you pass the needles, uh, pass the, uh, the mesh arms and uh, uh, just to fix the mesh arms to the, to the cushion as strong as you can because this as uh, the much uh, pushing that, that you can do, the, the less uh, amount of uh, liquid you have to put in the system. You fill the system and you create a pouch in the scrotum to pass the port. And finally, yes, this is the final position and you close this path just to prevent that the, the, the port can migrate to the wound, to the perineum uh, part. So, uh, I want to show you the results of the, the items. Uh, yes, this is a nice study, just uh, including more than 200 patients with a follow-up of five years. It's, it's really good. And uh, just take a look at the, the bat test in 24 hours, nearly 500 milliliters. And they achieve a nice number of 72 patients dry. Of course, again, it's a very different numbers compared to the master trial. With a medium number of fillings of two, with a mean total volume of 40 milliliters, with a 20% of complications, more frequent again, the perineal pain, but paying the price of some port erosions. This is the only case that I have in my, in my series, and with a devices plant a rate of 11%. Uh, let's move now about what the AI guidelines say about the, uh, those links. And uh, this is a little bit uh, out of date because uh, some years ago, um, probably we need more level of evidence and we have more level of evidence nowadays. But this has to be reviewed. In general, we know that probably the results are not uh, so good uh, for patients who have radiotherapy or intrastructure surgery or a severe incontinence, and there is no evidence that one uh, link is better than another. And for the adjustable one, the evidence is, is uh, as well as very low, 
band uh, and there is uh, a question that if adjustability offers additional benefit or not of, over other types of slings. In general, the recommendation is just to offer slings only to those uh, men who suffer mild to moderate incontinence and warn them about the worst results in case of radiotherapy, retro surgery or severe incontinence. But we have more information, uh, more actual information about the systematic review, very recent, uh, including nearly 4,000 patients from 64 studies. Most of them are from fixed uh, devices. But what we know uh, from this meta analysis is that, in general, the obje objective cure rate for fixed slings is very, uh, as you can see, very wide. But in general, the medium is uh, more or less 50% the pooled uh, results. And the adjustable one is a little bit higher. Uh, the pooled results here, 61% of, uh, of dry rate. And, but with a high heterogeneity uh, among the studies. Uh, just talking about the complications, the safety, the uh, complication rate is higher for the adjustable one, 26 versus 18 in the fixed. And the overall explantation rate is higher as well for uh, the adjustable ones is uh, nearly 14% compared to 5% only in the fixed slings. And I just want to finish just showing what we do in our hospital. Our strategy, we use the three, uh, the three devices. We use the repositioning sling, the compressive adjustable one, the items, and uh, this artificial center. And we choose one or the other depending on the patient characteristics. And of course, if the patient has bad hand dexterity or cognitive impairment, don't use an artificial center. Radiotherapy, probably the no, we don't use the slings. Previous urethrotomy, don't use advanced. If there is a future need of endurological procedures, we don't use an AMS 800. In case of a nocturnal urinary incontinence or no voluntary closure and a negative repositioning text, we don't use an advanced. And if the compression test, bulbar compression test is negative, we don't use an atoms. And depending on the results of the 24 hours SPAT test, we, if it's, it's low, uh, be, below 300, we use an atoms. If it's, it's below 600, we use an atoms, and there is no limit for artificial center. And I hope to see you virtually in next, uh, in next CEO meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Salvador, uh, and uh, I hope uh, now to join uh, Kidi. And uh, uh, while I'm preparing uh, the cases, uh, I have several questions from the audience, uh, and uh, one is about radiotherapy. Uh, do you have uh, uh, having a patient that received radiotherapy? Do you change the, 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 the technique that you offer? You change from sling to, to artificial urinary sphincter, or you still offer a, a male sling or the artificial urinary sphincter according to the amount of loss? Uh, the question is for... For, for both of you. Well, Carl, you have to start the discussion. <laughs> I, well, I, I think it is, it is a very good question. First of all, thank you for that, because it is an ongoing debate. Um, if you look into the literature and if we ask our patient, usually they want a sling because they don't have to do actually something. And I think this is one of those major points which, which starts a discussion. Um, the radiation, if you look into the literature and uh, if you look into the uh, functional sling, which is the advanced or advanced XP, suggest not to do it. If you go to the atoms, as we just have seen, it is a possibility, but, and that is one of those things with the expansion and the more pressure you need, some of the patients, at least what I have done, have complained that they are more or less sitting on a golf ball. 
So that might be not the nicest thing. And then it seems that the artificial sphincter also, it does have the possibility for more complication is the properly better suggestion if the patient does have um, the capability to really use it in the way as we need them to deal with it in a daily basis. So it is a question what you have to think about. Some patients are not prepared for an artificial sphincter, but you have to warn them that it might be even get worse. Um, what the literature is telling us after radiation and the question remains when and how long the radiation has passed. Very quickly, Francisco. Um, advanced, we don't offer uh, advanced if uh, there is radiotherapy because our results has not been very good. Atoms, uh, you double the chance of failure if the patient has uh, a uh, radiotherapy previous, but the patient has to know that risk. And we tend to offer artificial center, but depends on the characteristics of the patient, of course because there are patients that prefer to have the risk of failure, but not uh, going into an artificial center. So you have to discuss with the patient. Uh, I have one question that is straight for you, uh, Salvador. Uh, do, you use, do you use the elevation tests uh, to see if the advance is uh, the ideal sling for that particular patient? Well, we learn the technique for our colleague Peter Rader, and uh, just uh, we start with them, and we observe that uh, uh, we get better results when uh, this test is uh, is positive. Of course, it has no uh, a sensibility and specificity of ten percent, of course, but uh, if the Clearly, if the repositioning test, uh, the elevator test is negative, very clearly negative, uh, we don't uh, perform an advanced uh, sling. We move to an atoms or an sphincter depending on other characteristics, as I show you. Thank you. Uh, now uh, for Kidi, uh, and uh, uh, thank you for remembering us, and I think it is also valid for slings, that uh, we need to control the number of persons inside the OR to decrease as much as possible and to change gloves very frequently. Thank you for that. It's a very important detail. But uh, the, 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 the question is, if for some reason during uh, the uh, surgery, uh, you severe the urethra, what do you do, Kitty? You stop the surgery? I stop the surgery because um, some people have done and moved uh, the placement of the cuff to another location. I think it is too risky. To go back after three months is a very good way and the best experience. But as described, um, you can really avoid these injuries of the urethra if you stress the corpora spongiosum on, at the base to the corpora cavernosa and really take your time to, to free that. Uh, but to my suggestion, yes, stop the surgery. Uh, uh, before going to the cases, one last question. If uh, you have an infection, you have to remove the, the, the artificial urinary sphincter or uh, the, 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 the largest amount of the, sphincter, uh, of the sling. When do you do the, uh, uh, the, the next surgery? How long do you uh, wait until uh, uh, you place another artificial in sphincter or another sling? Well, that, okay. I will ask you for, uh, answer for the AUS, um, three months. And, and you, Salvador? We are more conservative. We wait for six months, but... And okay. the wait list in Spain, yes, it's probably six months. Uh, well, we have uh, now uh, 15 minutes, uh, uh, more or less, so we need to go to the cases. We have uh, more questions from the, uh, the, the, the audience, but uh, we have to move, and eventually we will try to, to answer them through the cases. So this gentleman, 65 years old, no radiotherapy, retired, is a tennis player, three pets per day of small size. Uh, he, as you said, 
along three days, in average, a small amount, 100, uh, less than 150 grams. Uh, of course, he, he, he loses much more when he plays tennis. Uh, no losses during the night, good cognitive <laughs> status, and the, the urethrocystoscopy shows a normal urethra and bladder. For this patient, what would you uh, offer, uh, Salvador, and then uh, Kitty? Well, I, I have two questions before. Uh, uh, I don't know the, the amount of urine liquid during exercise. Probably this is the average. And during the tennis days... It's very so variable, depending on doubles. 400, so that's, that's an important point because it's, that day is 400. I don't go to, for an advance. But uh, well, in this case, theoretically, I could uh, use an, an advance. I don't have a repositioning test, an elevation test, but probably it's an, uh, a good option. And you, Kitty? I would go for an advance if, if it is correct, um, 150 grams over three days, 50 grams per day. And no, no, uh, 150 per day in average. Per day. But anyhow, I, I would say. Anyhow, it's a that. small amount. Um, also, as the patient is uh, emptying the bladder prior to his game, um, I think the best outcome and the smallest amount of side effects, like pain, because he is very active and otherwise normal, I think a uh, functional sling like the Advance XP is a good choice for this patient. Uh, that's, uh, thank you for... Uh, 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 bringing the pain issue into uh, the, the, the webinar because actually uh, uh, pain in some patients might be important to discuss, particularly if they are more active and uh, uh, the, the slings, particularly atoms, might cause some pain during the first months. Moving to the second one. So here uh, the guy is less active uh, but the, the amount of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, loss is much higher, around 300 mLs per day. Uh, good cognitive status, good manual dexterity, and the, uh, the, the cystoscopy shows a normal urethra in the normal bladder. Or do you change the, uh, the choice into the artificial urinary sphincter? Or would you remain uh, 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 in the, uh, the sling? Uh, Salvador. Well, uh, I'll discuss with the patient, of course, but I think that uh, we have some place for uh, using an adjustable. In, um, in I have experience with the items, and we have a, a top num a cutoff, uh, not uh, uh, above the uh, uh, 600 uh, grams. Per day so probably this this patient fits uh, just to receive an atoms and, and you kitty well i i i partially agree uh, but on the other side with the possibility now that we even have different artificial sinkers on the market it i think it is important to discuss these possibilities with the patient as well and well, this is like where we discussed even in the past, like the borderline over 300 for an artificial sinker. And with the adjustables to my small experience now, it is helping them and we can adjust those that the patient is probably quite happy about it. He does have a good manual dexterity. So I think he would have a good situation in the long term. He is 69. So I think I would at least suggest it, but I would be happy still to use um, like a functional um, because you have a partial incomplete sinker. Well, before moving uh, into the third case, uh, I think one important aspect uh, in functional urology is to manage patients' uh, expectations. And clearly now from the master trial, we have to understand that many patients will report some leakages. Uh, might be small, but they will not be uh, completely dry. How do you inform your patients about uh, this aspect? Because 
probably in your experience that was already obvious from before even before the data from the massa trial if i may start um yes usually they let's take most of the male are coming with their wives and um we all assume that they are happy with their wife so i said if you want me to make you dry you leave your wife here so like the deal with the devil a little bit um i try to make it clear that it is very difficult to get a patient really dry because the replacement and the expectation a patient does have of dryness is the expectation of prior to the surgery and that means one thing if we are using slings or an AUS that over the time there is also a change even if the patient might be dry in, in the early phase after the surgery they become more mobile they're doing more they are more active and with this situation the situation of the placed piece of plastic if it is a sling or an AUS might not be the same as if we have a heavy incontinent patient who is more or less sitting today in his chair because he is incontinent so we have to inform them that there is a change and i think the new artificial sphincters might address this in a better way because we can adjust them and second we have to inform our patient that we improve their situation i think this is a lack of it i think a lot of these patients also they still leak if they keep in mind how much they have leaked before are still very happy about the improvement doctor i think that uh, uh, in my conversation with the patients i always say that i cannot restore normality in in you because i cannot put a new anatomical and normal prostate and sphincter so Uh, everything that I can do is just uh, an, uh, a, a theoretical approximation what uh, uh, what's doing an, uh, an exinter. So that means that uh, it's very difficult for me just to get you completely dry in any situation and the patient has to realize on that. And uh, probably for me the most difficult patient to, to achieve satisfaction, satisfaction is that patient that, that is very active and that has a very very small amount of, of urine liquids because it's very difficult just to get that completed dryness in any situation and you only have to look at the results of the master trial only 15 yeah. percent of patients are absolutely dry in any situation so you have we have to keep in mind that results but are very realistic And uh, we have to transmit that message to our patients because if not, satisfaction will not be achieved by, by most of our patients. That's my may point I, of view. May I add that, something to that? Yeah. I think it is important um, as we are all um, beside the EAU in the ICS, our ideal is to make a patient dry again. Maybe we have to move a little bit forward that because it is such a complicated mechanism, the continence mechanism, that it is very difficult to do so with a piece of plastic, if it is a sling or an artificial sphincter. And that, as Salvador mentioned correctly, it will not fit for every movement and everything we are doing. If you lift a box of wine or beer is something different as if you just lift yourself from the chair and go around in, in the living room So I think these are expectations and we have to demonstrate our patience. But I think um, regarding the master trial, it, we still have a lot of very good and happy patients after what we were able to do with the one or the other treatment if we individualize it for the patient and for their needs. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that is uh, a very important aspect and uh, uh, to inquire a, a, in patient's history what is the degree of activity because then uh, uh, we might uh, make a better choice and a better, advi a better advice. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, Salvador? No, just, just one comment. And we, have, uh, we must not forget that uh, many patients have bladder problems, low compliance, uh, the disorder activity, and other issues that made that the continence 
we only think about the stress urinary incontinence, but there are many other problems that m sometimes are very difficult to to manage and contributes to to uh, not achieving the dryness. So we might have uh, uh, patients that are more difficult than the average. This one, for example. And uh, what I, I, I want to stress in this one is that while doing uh, the conservative treatment, he had a stroke. And uh, so it's, it's a mild stroke, but uh, there is some weakness uh, of the right limb, uh, the right upper limb, uh, which is the dominant limb. Uh, little physical activity, the amount of loss is not very large per day, uh, but uh, in the urethrocystoscopy, he has uh, a, a stricture. So uh, here there are two issues in this case. Would you offer an artificial urinary sphincter having a patient with a uh, problem of, uh, or potential problem of manual dexterity? Yes or no? Uh, we have to be uh, quick in the answers. Salvador? Uh, well, um, first, uh, uh, if I can pass uh, uh, a catheter, I would like to have a urodynamic study because of, of this uh, stroke. I'm not sure what is the, the, the true cell function, but probably if uh, first of all, we, we need to treat the structure, of course. If not, uh, I, we cannot offer any option without treating that, that structure. Would you be worried by the fact that he had uh, eventually a, 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 a decreased manual dexterity in the future? Yes. Uh, yes. yes, I would be worried about that. Me? Kitty, just... Well, I, I would just make it very easy because it is not such a difficult case because he is more or less his activity. What he loves to do is to read and listen to music. So it's very little activity. I think this patient with a urethral stricture might benefit very good from the atom. And because he is sitting, he does not have this activity. He does not need to do it with his hands. If he worsens, he might get another stroke. So that will have help him quite a bit. So I would not go in the first line for an artificial sphincter. If you request it, I would definitely think about one or the other, but maybe not the, the AMS 800. But I would rather suggest um, like the atoms. Okay, uh, I think we are close to the end. Uh, and uh, I would like to... First, to thank the audience, to thank uh, you both for the wonderful lectures. And uh, as a wrap-up of uh, this webinar, I think the most important information is that we are not going to cure most of our patients. We are going to improve most of our patients. But we have to inform patients about that. And uh, to manage, manage the expectations is a, a key aspect of the treatment of post-prostatectomy incontinence. Uh, uh, we don't have a fixed form of treatment for every patient. We have to tailor the treatment according to the physical activity, to amount of loss, to the expectations of the patient with the potential complications we might uh, uh, get in the future. And of course, uh, uh, that was one question, and I'm sure that you agree. Uh, uh, one technique does not prevent the use of another technique. That means that if for some reason the artificial urinary sphincter fails because the patient has no manual dexterity, we still can remove it and move to a sling, or if the sling does not work, we still can use the artificial urinary sphincter. So thank you very much for attending this webinar. Uh, it was really enjoyable to discuss these cases with you. And, uh, well, have a nice evening. Thank you very much, very much for having us. Thank Bye. you. Very much. Thank you. See you at the EAU. Bye. Right.